Hi, this is Simon from Tokyo Productions and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion 5. And today we're going to be looking at this technique for chopping up your images and then reassembling them and animating them in various different ways. So I'm just going to grab my image and my background out of this project and I'm going to come over to a new one and paste them in just to get us started. So we've got this limestone texture from the library and then this photograph from Okinawa. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this group here and we're going to come down to the rectangle mask and just draw any old sort of mask like that. Then we're going to come over to the inspector and we need to do a little bit of maths. So first of all, let me just point out that I'm working in a 1920-1080 project. Frame rate is 24, but that's not relevant to this. The 1920-1080, these numbers are relevant because we're going to need to do sums on those numbers. So I want three rows of 12 slices each. So 1920 divided by 12 is 160. And similarly, 1080 divided by 3 is 360. So we want a box that's 160 wide and 360 high. So we can come over to the mask and we can just type in those numbers. So 160 wide, 360 high gives us this. I'm going to come over to properties and I'm going to have to reset that transform there. Next, what I want to do is I want to animate this mask so it shuttles across my picture, giving me one slice of it per frame. So to do that, I am going to come to the position here, open that up, select the X, add parameter behavior ramp. So bearing in mind we want 12 slices in each row, I'm going to come to frame 12 on my timeline here. But what I need to make sure I've done is that in preferences under time, I've set the frame numbering to starts from one. Okay, so on frame 12, I'm going to hit O to shorten that down. I'm also going to use this to zoom in on that area there. Okay, I want to start at minus 880 and end at plus 880. And you'll see that takes me from one side of the screen to the other. And if you're wondering how that works, that's 960 minus 160 over 2. Minus 960 would put the center of the slice on the edge of the frame, but we need to compensate by subtracting half the width of the slice. So that's where that number comes from. So I want to do it three times. So I'm going to duplicate that ramp behavior. So I'm going to select the ramp behavior, duplicate, and then select it again, duplicate. And then down here, let's zoom in even more, I'm going to slide my second instance so it starts at the end of my first and the third instance starts at the end of the second. And then you can probably see that that's going across the screen three times, but it's in the middle. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to jump down to the next row and then to the bottom row. And to do that, I'm going to do something slightly odd. We could do it with a ramp, but it's a little bit more tricky. So I'm going to use basic motion throw. And what I want to do is I want to come to that point there, frame 12, so a frame before my first ramp ends, and I'm going to hit I, and then step forward to 13 and hit O. So now I've just got that throw lasting two frames. Then I'm going to come into my mask properties, and I'm going to set the Y position to plus 360. If you remember, 360 is 1080 divided by three. So that puts it up there. And then this throw, I'm going to open up the throw velocity, and I'm going to type minus 8640 on y. So that's 1080 times 8. Not sure why that's the right number, but it is. So minus 8640. And you'll see that what happens there is that as I get to the end of that row, we jump down to there. And so now what I can do is I can duplicate that throw. Right click duplicate. And I can move it along to here. So it starts one be frame before that third ramp. And then you'll see, if I sort of play range out there, we've got the animation that we want. We could do this with keyframes, but I know a lot of you 
but prefer behaviours, so I thought I'd do it with behaviours instead. OK, so we're pretty much there. All we need to do now is to make a clone of this group. I'm going to drag out my limestone. I don't want it there. Move this group to the back because we don't want it within this group, which is our slices. Let's call that group slices just so you understand what it is. And I'll call that BG. OK, so we're going to take our slices group and we're going to right click and we are going to make a clone layer. And then what we can do is we can take the clone and we can come to Object, Replicate, or hit L on the keyboard. So then what we want to do is we want to come to the size and we want to set the width and height to zero. So if you remember, we want 12 columns and we want three rows. And we need to set up the origin here to be upper left and the build style to be by row. And then we want to come down here. We want to turn off play frames and then we want to set the source frame offset. You can't really see that unless we open it out. Source frame offset here. We want to set that value to one. Close that down again. And you'll notice that our picture has reconfigured itself, which is exactly what we want. I'm going to come to my rectangle mask and I'm just going to reduce the width and height a little bit so we actually see the, the gaps. We've gone to all this trouble and we can't actually see how clever we've been. So I'm going to reduce that width down to 150 and let's reduce the height to 350. So we've got gaps all around. And now what we can do is we can select the replicator and add a sequence replicator behavior. So replicator, sequence replicator. Let's go, I need to open up my timeline again. Come to frame 120 and hit O on the keyboard to shorten the sequence replicator down to 120 frames. Then we are going to add position and we're going to add rotation. We want to set the sequencing to from because we want these to drop down from the top. So let's just come to the beginning and see how far we need to go with the Y. We can go all the way up there. I need to make sure I turn off my slices group. We don't want to see that. And you'll see now that those pieces fly in from the top. I want to set the traversal to ease out so that they slow down nicely to the end of the animation like that. And then let's open up the rotation and set an X rotation value of 45. And let's set the Z position to 1000. Now you'll notice that nothing's happening on the Z position. And that's because we need to come to the replicator and we need to turn on the 3D button. And now you'll see that my X rotation and my Z position are both active. So one final thing is we want to add a camera. Now, if we add a camera now, everything's going to go horribly wrong. What we need to do is we need to make sure we lock our slices group before we do that. So I'm going to lock that. I'm also going to lock my background because I don't want that affected by the camera. And now we can come to add object camera. We can say yes, switch to 3D because we want our replicator group to be 3D. We can come over to the camera and line it up to taste, something like that. And then that looks like this. Also in my example, you noticed I added some text in here. So I'm going to unlock this slices group so we can add that. I'm going to click on the text tool, type in some text, line it up, and give it an outline. So because we've cloned the group, we can pretty much add anything we want to it and it's all going to get sliced up in the same way and animated in the same way. What I also want to do is I want to come to the replicator here. You'll notice that in my example, I had uh, the frames a little bit sort of scattered as they landed. So I did that with the angle randomness. So I'm going to set that to 12 and I'm also going to turn on the drop shadow for the clone, like so. You'll see that gives us a little bit of a, an edge there. And because I want to get, have those pieces come into alignment at the end, I'm going to add a ramp behavior to that angle randomness. Click here, add parameter behavior, ramp. Let's just turn off the ramp for one second, set the angle randomness back down to zero, come back to the ramp, turn it on, 
set the start value to 12. And then I'm going to hit O on the keyboard at frame 120. And then I think what I want to do is I want to have a start offset of about 50. So they don't start moving into place until about halfway through like that. And then we get this result. One other tiny little thing which I did was I took the clone layer here and I came to filters, stylize, extrude. Uh, don't panic just yet. I turned the extrude style to gradient. I set the distance to one and the back size to 0.99. And you see that gives us a little bit more of a sense of these are actually tiles with a bit of depth. We can also just come to our rectangle mask and maybe add some roundness to those corners, like so. We can also add a light, given that we're in 3D. So I hope you've understood the principle of that. The only really hard part is just setting up this slices group. Depending on how many rows and columns you actually want, you'll need to adjust the maths accordingly. But hopefully I've given you enough to go on. So there you go. Thanks very much indeed for watching. I hope to see you again another time.